annual inspections, among other obstacles, and our roof, today's episode is all about getting the approvals we need to finally start working on the mill itself. How in the world? Welcome back to our channel. If you're new around here, we're Brittany and Drew, two hopeful adventurers who got married, moved into a van, and have been chasing adventures all around the globe ever since. And now, after moving from the USA to Portugal, we'll be documenting our entire journey of building our dreams as we transform a historic water mill into our first home, not on wheels. Join us as we embark on this new and exciting phase of life. Now, let's take in a deep breath and let it out. Let the adventure begin. Good morning, bom dia, and welcome back to another episode where we are not parked on our land. Drew and I had an unexpected snafu happen today where... Hey, come here really quick. Oh, okay. <laughs> I need you to take a look at the back and tell me which lights were out. This is what I was explaining. We were supposed to just have... Oh, I need shoes. So, what was just supposed to be an easy morning taking our camper van down for the annual inspection. We realized that two of the lights on the back of our camper were out. Beat myself up a little bit because I should have been proactive and checked this days ago so I could have got the parts or made sure that everything was in tip top shape. But you know, there's a lot of things going on at once in our lives and so we checked as we were rolling out of our property and... But this time I was so proud of ourselves for having it dialed in, for getting up the hill easily, not yes. getting our parking blocks jammed and wedged underneath the van. <laughs> was it this red light or this red light? This, this one. red light. Okay, and on that side I realized, remember you said one of the white lights wasn't working and I asked? Yeah but that's only meant to be a blinker on that side. This is the single only identifier for reverse right here. See, okay. there's an extra space in the lights. Gotcha. We're just grateful that they had the bulbs that we needed and that we are four minutes away from the inspection place. So hopefully we can make it on time. I called and asked if we could get a later appointment and she said, no, you must come at the time that you have scheduled. So we don't want them to fail us because that's bad. I don't know what happens if they fail us. You gotta get it fixed and go back for another inspection. You Sometimes know. that can be a lot of money. Ah, okay, this is gonna work, right? There's all the bulbs. Should just be this one. There we go. Ah, it is the one with the two. Is that okay? No, he said I need to switch it if there's two, two little knobbies. Did you go back in the store? Yeah, I think so. Oh. Ah, shoot. Yeah, right there, it's burned out. You can see that's fried. I'll be back. Okay. Keep an eye on everything there, screws up. I'll be here. But we're not the only camper here. This one behind us is from Poland. Isn't that amazing? While Drew does his thing in the store, I'm gonna take a quick minute and thank the sponsor of today's episode, and that is AG1, which if you haven't heard us talk about AG1 yet, you must be new to our channel, so welcome. Basically, it's a daily foundational supplement that helps support things like our gut, our immune system, our brains, and even healthy aging for things like our skin, our hair, and our nails. What we love most about it is how easily it fits into our daily lives. It is just one scoop or one travel pack a day, and it is best taken first thing in the morning for optimal absorption for us if we're feeling off balance, whether it's our energy, our moods, stress levels, or even our focus. The powerful plant extracts, adaptogenic herbs, and phytonutrients bring back the clarity and balance into our lives, along with the sustained energy from B vitamins. AG1 just helps replenish and nourish our bodies in the most simple way, and although it might be hard to describe the flavor, we love it. And if you want to try AG1 for yourself, then head on over to the link in our video description below and you will get a free full year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 plus five travel packs with your first purchase of AG1. Now let's see if Drew was able to get those bulbs. <laughs> you're back. Thank you. <laughs> you're not supposed to touch the last part with your oily fingers. There we go. Uh, which one's going which? <laughs> oh dear. I'm gonna guess that one goes on here. Uh, All right, I'm gonna go start the car and you're gonna tell me that all these bulbs work. The red light works. Nothing out of the white light, no. 
Ah. That's our brake light that we were trying to replace. It could be a fuse. Maybe these are on backwards. Connections are a little janky though. We're already 10 minutes late. Or more than that. Come on, white light. No. This one works, works. This one doesn't work. Strong carriage. Now I am opening up the fuse box. Trying to see if any of them look like they're out. Yeah, there's a little blood. I don't know. You can see Drew is sealing up the one on the left. The brake the middle one. Not used to three foot pedals. Are you serious? Yeah. The far right light. Yeah. It is working. How did we do that? Pretty amazing, right? Hi, guys! <laughs> I have no idea how we did that or what changed. I think I just... The fuse? Who golden, knows? Golden touch. Yeah. Maybe it rattled loose from all our overlanding and adventurous expeditions. Yes. It's also good news because I think if we were to vlog in this parking lot any longer, we would get more strange looks than we've already been having. <laughs> They're just not used to YouTubers here in Europe. I think most people take their parts home and work on them. I know, but home is where you park it still, right? Sort of. We got one dead light bulb and it's now 12.15. Let's hope that they were running an hour behind on appointments. Maybe today's our lucky day, I hope. And we're off, three minutes. For anybody who doesn't know what an MOT is, it's the annual inspection on older vehicles. They wanna make sure that your blinkers, your windshield wiper, your brake lights, just everything mechanically and visually for driving on the roads is sound with your vehicle. Kind of a pain in the butt, if you ask me, for us, because we don't use this all the time because it's just parked up as our house. But we'll be grateful when we do take the van again on another adventure that it's all completed and we don't have to do it then. But for now, every year in July, we have to do it. Ah, right here, on the left. Ah, Centro de Inspeções. IPO. They call it an MOT in the UK and that is where we used to have to take the Howlin Yowler, our UK honey van, honey van, honeymoon mobile that we traveled Europe and Africa in in 2016 to 2018. But here in Portugal, maybe they call it the IPO, but we cannot film inside where they do the testing. So hopefully we'll catch you guys afterwards with a big old check mark and an approved new IPO MOT thing. But I'm thinking that we aren't even late. They look very backed up here. Whoa. I'll be back. <laughs> While Drew goes inside to check in and I have you guys to myself for a moment. Oh, he's already coming back out. I have very good news. <gasps> we can still wait in line. She just needs the identification card of our camper. All right, where were we? I can fill you in on what we've been up to over the past couple of weeks because since our last episode where we went to Lisbon and started our five-year residency journey or journey towards Portuguese and US citizenship because we can be dual citizens here, we have had a lot of visitors come and we have not been very productive on our land, which has been making us feel like a little bit stuck, guilty, overwhelmed, you know, like we've been a little bit hard on ourselves, but it is summer, it's super hot, whoop, and hard to get some things done, especially in the middle of the day. But we've had friends come from Germany, from the US, we have my dad coming this coming weekend, so there have been a lot of people and we've been enjoying our time with them. And summer is the season for summering, for beaching, for playing, for being with family and friends. Although winter also seems like that kind of a time, but anywho, hopefully we can get back to working on the land soon so that we can move our camper down to the terrace, like we said a few episodes ago, because we're still up in the baking sun and we're waiting for those canvases for shade structure to be shipped to us. So everything in its own time, we are trying to be patient and we got things like this to get done along the way. So we're not at a lack of things to do or people to see or fun to be had, which is a good place to be. Hopefully you all are enjoying your summer too. And I hope it's not too hot or too rainy if you're somewhere in the jungle, but hopefully it's just Goldilocks, right? <laughs> and he's back again. All right, so after 35 euros and a nice friendly lady at the counter, we can move to line four. 
So we're in line one, wow. two, three, four. Typically it's for heavy vehicles, pesados. Oh, we're in that one. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hopefully these poor guys aren't trying to pass any chest. Oh, geez. Well, I'm going to get a coffee, 60 cents. Well, well, well. Here you go, sir. Whoa, even <laughs> with the foam on top. Beautiful from a machine. Yes, I know. Cheers. Cheers. Salud. It's very hot. It's like surprisingly hot. It's our turn. Whoa, look at that. They have like a whole walkway underneath the vehicle. But I think it's our turn. This little machine here is how they read the lights and things like that. The exhaust, the amount of particles coming out. And then we'll move on to these rollers and he will turn the wheels and that will project us forward. Crazy. Once we're on those rollers, he can check when the gas is going and he can control the screen up there that's reading a couple different numbers. That's really fascinating. We're not used to this. They don't do these annual inspections in the US, right? No. It's just like a smog test, and I remember. Only in California though. Yeah. That I know of. Maybe there's other states. Let us know if we're incorrect. But all I know is California, every two years we had to go do an emissions test. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. Everywhere is different. Oh. Okay. Good news. We got approved. Good See that right job. there? Results. Aprovado. Aprovado. We were sweating for many reasons. <laughs> also, I've gotten a few comments about my glowing pendant, which you can really notice when I'm in the dark. It's actually made with bioluminescence from the sea. And the former owners of the mill, when they came here and met with us, and they were so sweet and amazing and wonderful, and they showed us around the water mill and just gave us a whole rundown of their hopes and dreams for the property, all of the supplies that are inside, and we feel very lucky to be embarking on this adventure with them because from now until we have our names on the deed, and I'm sure even far beyond that, we will be like family. Isn't it just magical? I love it so much. We love them, but whoa, the boat's moving. I gotta get in my seat. Okay. <laughs> it was crazy to see them checking things like the seat belt buckles and they were underneath the vehicle and all up in the undercarriage <laughs> of a Speary too. Where are we going, boss? The beach. Which you? beach? Uh, the closest beach. Just vamos la. <laughs> Follow that scooter. Phew. We just parked at the beach. But first, it's big time. Our first figs. Big time? Fig season is here. Oh, and they're cold. Oh, man. Ready for this? How good this is. Oh. <gasps> oh. I'll show you mine if I can see yours. <laughs> we should trade half and half. No. Yeah? No. Oh. It looks like a scary monster mouth. <laughs> You've already eaten yours. <laughs> Can't help it. Which half do I start with? Mm -hmm. Oh, we made it to the boardwalk. That's a good feeling. Sandy toes. <gasps> Look at all the umbrellas. These That's people been here all day for new arrivals. 5 p.m. beach arrival. And then we saw the beach donut guy doing his little dance, which usually Drew can't resist. Babes just couldn't resist. They're selling donuts on the beach. It seems kind of out of place, but I've been told they're the best. Funny enough, they do this on a lot of beaches in Europe, in France. Oh, wow. <laughs> Get a fake, though. Oh, man, look at that. This is just what I needed for a little break from our land work. That's a beauty. That's Drew's favorite. Mm. Bowl of the building. Oh, wow. Is it just as good as you remembered? It's better because it's outside. I know, right? A little salty air in there. I mean, yeah. Summertime in Europe. I could get used to this. Are you sure you don't want one? <laughs> I'm alright. I need to get in there. Okay. Everything I hoped it'd be. Everything and more. <laughs> 
hope you guys feel refreshed too. Yes. It's an early one. Drew and I were literally in bed and got the message that our roofing guy was here. And right now they're already on the roof and it's before 8 a.m. So things are happening. You can see they're measuring things out, checking the stability, the strength, see what kind of water damage has been done and trying to see if the entire roof needs replaced or what we can salvage. We also were told that there needs to be a bit more of a lip on the edge of the roof or else the water just goes back inside. On the edge here they have a good lip, but the sides here, it's very flat. <laughs> it's really interesting how they do the roofs. Right now he's explaining that we would be removing the window that's in the roof and replacing it with four smaller ones. And what's incredible about the interior of this roof is that the sellers hand cut the bamboo and put them up here. And apparently bamboo is amazing for insulation because in the winter inside of the bamboo tubes it holds the air and keeps it warm. I think that's how it works. And then in the summer it holds the cooler air or something like that. But anyway, this is how the original roofs here in Portugal were done. This is the traditional way. So it's pretty special and they worked really hard and it's really beautiful. So we're hoping somehow we can preserve this. Somehow. Right now he's checking to see if all of our extra tiles that we collected over here are the same as on the roof over here so he can use them. He said it would take about 10 days to replace it. With a team of five people. Yeah. So he thought our beam that spreads the whole span of the roof was good inside. We just have to redo the connection and our pillar. So that was good to hear. That was really good news. To help clarify, this very long beam here, which we were told was made of chestnut wood, is good. But the connection here is not resulting in what might be the biggest job of the water mill renovation and is required for the camera to grant us the habitation license. And once we have that, the deed will finally be able to be placed in our names. Good news is though, that besides getting the turret covered in ceramics and installing a gutter of sorts, the rest of the roof was made very, very well. It's a good idea to un a roof here too, maybe. Aqui? Yeah. Yeah, it's possible or it's... Tengo un problema con agua ali. Also thought that having a little roof made here would be a good idea, especially since we were having some leaking issues on the back wall of the mill. Primero, so focus on the sí. bayou. Uh, sí, sí. Más importante, yeah, sí. Otra y rotonda y esto más tarde. So our roofing guy just left and Drew and I were saying how grateful we are and how good it feels to finally have someone come out here and look at our roof and start to begin the process of getting it fixed because we really want this done in time for rainy season. Number one, we don't want rain to be pouring down on that window in the roof that's leaking because that could just cause more problems. And number two, we would like to be living in there by winter. I don't know how realistic that is, but that would be wonderful. Because like we've said before, insulation in our camper van isn't the most amazing and we don't want to be freezing our buns off here in the winter. Plus it can get pretty rainy and wet and it'd be really nice to be inside of a sound, strong and dry structure. So hopefully he'll be getting back to us with an orzamento or a quote here quickly. But Drew asked me what I thought it would cost to have our roof fixed. 
He guessed 20,000, I guessed 10,000. So let's see, I'll be curious to hear. And I don't know if you saw in this morning's drone footage, but there's this interesting cavity around the house and it's actually like this little stone wall that somehow routed the water down and through the mill so that it turned the wheel and made the grinding stones grind the cornmeal into flour. That mysterious cavity is also the reason why we think we're experiencing a leak in this section of the mill. We're definitely gonna have to investigate this further. But do you remember when it looked like this? That's some thick vegetation. Wow. Can barely get those open. Look at all those thorns. Oh, that's our next strimming place. <laughs> gotta clear 50 meters, right? We gotta get down in this big chamber between the wall and the house on the uphill direction. There's that chamber Drew was saying where the water flowed. You know, they diverted it over and it went down and spun the stones and made the grains. Made the floor. Hmm. This is pretty tight. Look how tight that is. We got this big old machine and I gotta get in there. I'm really curious how this is gonna work. Hmm. This is what I see. How in the world? It didn't seem like it was too effective. I can barely get the machine in there. I mean, got a little bit. I can't say that did much. I was trying to be careful not to hit the mill. I can remember just a few months ago when we arrived here, I had never used a weed whacker with a blade on it. And here I am now, look at me go. There has to be a solution. Seems like they were just chucking all the roofing tiles here in the past. I also noticed that the old wall here looks really, really well built and solid. And you can see here they've used tar paper to prevent water erosion around the base of the mill in the new section. Pretty good design if you ask me. And here, look how high that goes. There's a lot of stuff on this wall still up high growing. 
but it looks a heck of a lot better. I want to point this out. This is Silvish growing in the windowsill right there. I think if the mill was left for another seven years, we might have had a jungle taken over it. No, I'm glad that job's over. Perfect timing. I got some vegetables from our neighbors for dinner. Oh sweet, you went grocery shopping. I did, basically. <laughs> he was having some trouble with his pumps, so I went over there and helped him dig a new trench and hopefully tomorrow he can get everything irrigated on his land, but as a thank you, he gave us these. What a guy. So lucky. Look at that, look at that tomato. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Good morning to you too, bom dia. We've been emailing with our architect about when he thinks we'll be able to get the construction permits from the city hall so we can finally begin working on the house, on the water mill, and ultimately the roof. We're waiting to get the permission from the city hall and in order to get that done, our architect has to finalize the engineering projects for the functionality of the house, everything from electrical to the types of materials to the plumbing pipes to septic sewer lines, etc. They thought they had everything together. However, we had to postpone being able to submit it because some of the engineering things had to be redrawn up after our architect came out here for a visit. So now he's getting those, he's gonna be able to submit those hopefully tomorrow, which is a huge step forward for us. Once he's got all that submitted, it basically means that we'll get a response within two months. Last time for the first approval, it only took 30 days. It was way quicker than we expected, but now we've had a bit of a hang up. We're getting that submitted. It'll feel so good when we get a response back and fingers crossed, everything will be approved, which means we'll have the license to start constructing, start building, which the first part we want to construct is our roof. But the most exciting news is that we might not have to wait for that construction permit to begin work on the roof. There is a chance with that. So basically our architect is very close with the city hall where his office is located and hopefully he can find favor with them and get their permission to authorize us without having to have the final decision for all the paperwork. I mean, the paperwork is this thick in a binder yeah. of all the engineering projects. The thing that most concerns us is that that leaking window situation, if that's not fixed in time for fall and for rainy season, that's not an option. So if he can get us the thumbs up and the go ahead to get that roof fixed ASAP, we're gonna go with it, so. Keep your fingers crossed, fingers and toes and prayers. And we're gonna try and get another quote on the roof too because it's good to have a few good quotes, you know, so we can make a better informed decision. But we'll let you guys know soon what happens with that, hopefully, hopefully soon. I'm ready to get building. Me too. Also wanted to show you guys this, our new shade system. Drew strung this cord, which is actually a pull cord for a chainsaw, but it's really strong. And this is scaffolding cloth. Babe, what do you call this? It's like fishing net. Not really, it's like a scaffolding type of material. It allows air to pass through it. It's kind of like a mosquito net. I think the farmers use them to put over top a lot of their crops to keep maybe bugs out, but still let the sun to pass a little bit. And we have it tied to a cinder block here with a bungee cord. We love that it has the little eye hole things. The grommets. Grommets. So it's pretty great because it tends to get pretty windy up here so the wind can pass through. We still get light into our camper van so it doesn't feel super dark. I do love where you can sit back there and still look out. Yeah, me too. And it's like got this nice green hue. Oh, hello. <laughs> Isn't that nice? And that's all for this episode. There's more to come. We can't wait to see you back here soon. Real soon. With your fingers and toes still crossed. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. You're the best.